I mean, the majority of the way, most people here, because I train people that I hear from God, is yeah. impressions or thoughts, mm -hmm. discernment, intuition, instinct. So for me personally, I mean, I've had those, I've had some really deep encounters with God. I've had some really mm -hmm. stunning encounters with God. But the way that I hear God most of the time is just, I'm sitting with him, I'm asking questions, I'm looking at people he loves, I'm trying to get, like, what was your dream for them before time began? Yeah. Like, like, who are you to them? Like, mm -hmm. especially if it's someone I can't relate to. Okay. I'm trying to get his empathy and his connection. And then I get feelings or I get a drop down sense of his heart. And it's, I always refer to it, First Corinthians 2, that the Holy Spirit is tying us between God and, and our, our hearts mm -hmm. and our spirit. And he's dropping his thoughts in it. So we you're thinking about, that. even at that point, you're thinking about how can I serve or how can I be a blessing? You're not even thinking about, well, God, what do you want to say to me? Both. Okay. I, I would say it's both. And so like a recent time, we were, this morning, we were at the coffee shop, walked up to Brista, and I looked at her and I go, you're not a Brista, you're a creative person. What's going on? Like, who are you? Yeah. And she goes, how do you know that? I said, I'm from LA. I can sense a creative person. <laughs> and she laughed and I said, you know, I'm, I'm also Christian. We kind of, we're wired this way. We think this way. I was like, what do you want to do? What's your creative dream? We just had this conversation and she was completely disarmed and normally wouldn't talk to a Christian yeah. about this kind of thing. Yeah. But was telling me her dream, you which I think you when, weren't weird, Sean. when people, <laughs> uh, yeah. sometimes I'm weird, but I wasn't weird this time. But when people feel the love of God in you and they there feel you your go. genuine interest, yes. they tell you their dream. It's one of the yeah. signs. And yeah. Jesus had that with people where they would tell him things that they wouldn't normally divulge exactly. in their first meeting yeah. because they could feel the kingdom inside of him. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for me, like I didn't have this big awakening moment. I just had this feeling like, that girl's creative and she's going to do something with her creativity. Yeah. It's a career, not just a hobby. But you knew that was the Holy Spirit. It wasn't yeah. like Sean thinking it, that. It uh, was my thoughts, but with God's <clears throat> behind it. Yeah. That, like that confirmation. Instinct. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And how long did it take you to be sure about your thoughts and God's thoughts well, melding together. You know, together we didn't have permission 30 yeah. years ago to do that, right? We had to, everything had to be like very J King James or something. And <laughs> yeah. I feel like as I, I grew, before you <laughs> speak. totally. And I remember going to God and saying, God. I want to have a real relationship with you. I've grown yeah. up in the church. I'm second generation. I've never left you. I've yeah. never had a time of rebellion or whatever, but I don't feel like I really know you the mm -hmm. way I want to know you. And I know you well. I know, I've read the Bible so many times, but I don't know you the way that satisfies me. Mm -hmm. And I think you're available. I think you've wired me this way. This is your desire in me, not my desire for you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just, I'm going to pick up a phone. This sounds stupid, but I picked up an old landline phone. And I was like, come and talk to you like I talked to a friend for a minute and get some of the false reverence out and the religious spirit out. <laughs> uh, hi, God. Oh, this feels so stupid. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about what some things I'm going to hear about, and then I'm just going to wait and listen. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I think I had a real relationship with God. Did you God. hear his voice on the line now? No. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I did. But I started to recognize, yeah. though, like, oh, this has a different feeling to it. And then the other thing that I've done, which we outlined in the first chapter of the book, is I, I help people reverse engineer all their good wins in life to see the pattern of how God speaks mm -hmm. to them. So if we put together five pieces of paper on here and said, what are the five best decisions you ever made that had the best fruit? Yeah. And so marriage, you know, like uh, the best career choice. When marriage, I said, yes. that's, one, that's what I did, yes. <laughs> marriage is mine too. Yeah. And so you look at those and you say, what did it take you to get there? Like, let's yeah. go to stage one. Like, what yeah. what were you dreaming of when you were little that caused you to this person to be the one? Yeah. And let's go as far back as we can. And then you start to look at the actual when it gets closer, the speed of where you made decisions, and you start to go, oh, wait, I'm not in charge of this. Like, I'm not the hero of the story God is. And I did hear him. But you had, sur you me, had surrender and in all me. of those decisions, too. Yeah, but it's, I think well, I've done this with people who are barely Christians, and they're, they can see where God wow. yeah. showed them. Wow. Even, even people before they were saved, God was still trying to interact with them and love Isn't them. That something? And they go, oh, I you know what? That was a providential moment. Isn't that a I'm great like, a moment, moment, though, when you see that light go off totally. of them and they realize, oh. oh, my gosh, I haven't been alone this whole Because time. there's a pattern in how God's pursued us our whole lives. Oh.